What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I have Bullmore Devil's Cask number three. Okay, this is a cask strength Bullmore, which is kind of rare. Actually, this one in particular is very rare. 56.7%. It is a combination of Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry aged. This one doesn't have an age statement. In the past, the edition one, or the first one, the Devil's Cask one, was 10 years old. After that, they dropped the age statement and we can assume that it got a little bit younger. They did a number two and they did a number three. There's pretty much no reason why you would drop the age statement unless the whiskey got younger. If it was older, you'd probably put 11 years old. If it was 12 years old, 13 years old, you want people to know that it's older than the previous edition that sold very well. If you don't want them to know that it got younger, you go to a no age statement. Be that as it may, this has a huge following and a very, very lucrative secondary market. I picked this up in a trade, but I've seen the secondary prices go anywhere between 250 American to 350 American. So not cheap. You could probably still find it in auction for about 200 and I think some places have a few dusties on the shelves where you can pick them up for retail prices. All right. Like I said, I picked this up in a trade. I traded my Glendronic Cash Strength Batch 4, which is also limited and also unavailable at the moment readily. So the person that got that kind of got their value in secondary market prices because if it's not there already, it will be there very soon. Got it, the new gray and black Whiskey in the Six hat, rocking that today. Got my Whiskey After the Throne shirt, rocking that today. Turning over a new leaf. I just quit one of my jobs, not my teaching job of course, but at uh, the kickboxing gym that I was at, I plan to start something on my own very shortly, so hopefully that'll happen in the next little while. Um, Feel good. Freed up a little bit of my time. Baby number two is coming, so we'll see how that goes. All right. 56.7%. Very little peat on the nose, in my opinion. Really sweet. Okay, so you're getting a lot of that Pedro Jimenez, a lot of that Oloroso Sherry. There is a nuttiness to this. Dark fruits, dates, figs, that sort of thing. Dried dates and figs. There's a chocolate element to this as well. <clears throat> and in the back you get a little bit of that Isla peat. A little bit of saltiness maybe. But what's strange about an I Love Heated Whiskey is that this one is dominated by its sherry nose instead of the peated nose. Okay, um, it's really dark. If those are first fill casks, which it does say they're first fill Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez, that could definitely be no added color but we don't know because they didn't put it anywhere and I wish they would, but we know that Bowmore adds color to their other stuff. So it's very possible that this has added color in it, which is a shame in my opinion, because if you're using first fill Oloroso and first fill Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, this is non-chill filtered. It goes without saying that you wouldn't even need to add the color. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they do not add color to this it's super dark, but like I said, it's first fill and it's cast strength until filtered, which would tend to lean towards a darker whiskey. And it's, it's spent its whole life in there as opposed to being finished in there. It's a marriage of first fill, yeah. So I'm gonna go with it's no added color, but I could be wrong. Nose is beautiful, let's taste it.
huge viscosity. This one needs a little bit of time to open up. The first dram I had, much like a lot of cast strength whiskeys and a lot of older whiskeys, is not the best. Second one gets better, third one gets even better, and we're at about the fourth one that I've had out of this bottle, maybe third, yeah, I think fourth. And this is really good. Very little smokiness whatsoever on the palate. Really sweet. I haven't added water in in this glass yet, and I really don't want to. It doesn't need it. It's not overly powerful. You can definitely sip this one without having to worry about adding water. It's not burning as it goes down my throat. It's not burning in my stomach. This is a really well-balanced whiskey in my opinion. Wow, really nice. Okay, I'm going to add water for argument's sake, but not a lot. I just want to see if anything changes with that drop. <clears throat> okay, so you do open up, and it, what happens is the peatiness is a little bit more prevalent, all right? A little bit more iodine now. A little bit more medicinal. Hmm. Still really nice, really sweet. Oranges. Definitely more dominant now than it was. Blood orange for sure. It's almost a grapefruit like bitterness with a really sweet clementine type sweetness. If that makes any sense. Really, really nice stuff. I'm gonna really enjoy this one. I'm gonna drink it very slowly, ensure that it lasts, because that's an A plus for me. That's at least a 90. I could give that up to a 91, maybe 92. No lower than an 88, in my opinion, so give or take a couple points. But that's an A plus for me, so I'm gonna go with a 90. Um, <clears throat> as I say, for those of you that are unfamiliar with my scoring scale, a B minus goes from 70 to 74. A B goes from 75 to 77 ish. And then a B plus is 78 and 79. And then an A minus is 80 to 84. An A is 85 to 89. And then an A plus is 90 and above. I've never had anything even close to a 95 yet. So, um, that's just my opinion. I feel like if it had, if it's gonna go to 95, it has to be utterly flawless almost. Literally one thing's wrong with it. Um, whereas when you're playing with different flavor profiles, that balance is essential and nothing really hits that perfect category. And I don't even know if that actually exists, but some people say that the uh, McAllen number six is up there as close to perfect as possible. Other people say there's other things. I've heard McAllen M as well. Um, we'll see, I don't know. I've, I've yet to try either of those and I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to. So I don't know if I'll ever see a 95 to 100. But right now, that's a 90 for me. I got some really good whiskey this year and I'm really happy about it. Uh, this channel has brought me a, a lot of opportunities and I have you guys to thank. So I really do, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's, it's been awesome so far, all right? That's an A plus. Um, you guys, I really would like to get to this stock and barrel whiskey. All right, that's gonna happen next, hopefully. 
I have a whole bunch of stuff. I recently opened up this Glendronic as well, and that's gonna be hard for me to give this. I'm not gonna spoil it, but this is really good stuff too. It's 11 years old. I'm starting to really enjoy younger cast strength whiskey. Um, not sure about how you guys feel about it, but it's delicious. Cast strength whiskey in, in general, if, if you talked to me before I started this channel about cast strength whiskey, I was always hesitant, a little bit afraid of it to be honest with you. Things have changed, obviously, because most of the things that I gave A plus this year are either cast strength or very close to it. So, the top six whiskey of the year is, or sorry, my whiskey of the year, the top six for whiskey in the six, um, will be very interesting because I'm having a lot of trouble sorting it out. I'm going through videos trying to figure out which one's gonna be the top. Um, I've tasted a few to try to remember, uh, but they've all been really, really good. So it's gonna be interesting. I've had about eight or nine A pluses now this year, which I did not expect. Once again, thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for following me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Continue to do that. Check out Patreon if you get a chance. Cheers, guys.